Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to talk about strokes that aren't strokes that are strokes. All right, so check this out. I don't know how much you've played around with offset paths, but there's something about it that can be kind of frustrating or kind of useful. And that's if you have an open path like this and you do an offset on it, you end up with this kind of outline thing. That'll happen to you even if you use something like an ellipse. We double click on here, put one in there. We'll open this up. Option, double click on that. We'll bring this down for good measure. And if we add a trim to this and make it an open path, you can see now we get that outline. But if you go over here to our other trim that we have in the end, you can actually trim the actual shape that it makes. So depending on where you put your trim paths and your offset, you can get different effects. So I had to play with that and I did this right here with these bunch of boxes. And I was kind of trying to see if I can get like a parade of them going, which I really haven't figured out a way to do yet. But messing around, I actually uh, took this trim pass and I set it to 10, 100 so I can offset it and have it loop around. And I set them all to one angle control. So you can do stuff like this where it becomes like one piece and then it becomes like a bunch of them. Then they all get cut kind of weird, but it keeps looping like that. Just something I thought was kind of interesting. And then I started to think that since I can make these little boxes like this, I wondered if I could make like a bouncing box animation, like one with like a little squash and stretch and all that kind of stuff. So I took these circles, put them together in a merge path, and I put this rectangle here, which makes this thing end up as a square. Because if it's on a perfect circle that's not terribly big, you end up getting like a curvature in it. But what's interesting about this is that all I'm doing to animate this whole thing is just using a trim path. And I'm starting off with it a little bit bigger than a square, so it's kind of like stretching as it falls down. And these keyframes right here tighten it up into an actual square shape when it gets to the end. And the only other thing I'm animating is offset. So what's really interesting is that when it gets to the little corners where it kind of pinches in a little bit, it actually squashes and then bounces back. So it's kind of a baked in squash and stretch without having to do a damn thing, which is actually pretty neat. I wasn't expecting it to work that well. So then I went and simplified it a little bit more and I just drew my own spline and I just made sure that this one has a little bit more straighter leg at the end. It has an extra point here to make sure that that happens. And it does this. It doesn't seem to squash as much as the other one. And it has a little bit of a curve to it because it's not a perfect line between those, but for something quick and dirty, it's actually pretty neat. And if you really needed this to be perfect at the end, you can always sub it out with an actual square. I'm gonna go back to this one because I like it a little better, even though it actually ends a little bit lower than it should. I've tried to make this offset path kind of convert back into some sort of shape that I could use like a merge paths on and do some other different complicated stuff, but so far, I have been unsuccessful in After Effects to get that to actually work. This is still completely a stroke. Although, there is some weird oddities with it. It's technically a stroke that is also a stroke. So if you add something like wiggle paths to this thing, you can actually get it to wiggle the outside path and not the overall shape. But if you put it before it, you can get it to actually wiggle the shape that it's on first. And now you get like a weird bouncing rock thing. That's actually quite weird. So depending on where you put your offset paths, you can get a lot of different types of animation. Might want to freeze that at the end if you actually do that. I'm going to dump that off though. So I hope you guys like this open-ended tutorial and I hope you take it and explore it further. There's a lot of interesting things that happen when you kind of play outside the boundaries of normal After Effects use. So as always, I encourage you to do that. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com workbench. And make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. If you did, you saw that we had a 4th of July sale and we've actually released Stack It. So if you want some of that sweet grid action, go check that out. All right, guys, as always, I am Joe and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>